Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Old Testament reading began with these words. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Fear not, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. If we didn't know the beginning of that story, we would think that something awful must have been happening with Abram during that time, right? Because after these things, then we'd wonder, what are those things that, that Moses is talking about? After these things, God has to appear to Abraham and say, do not be afraid. Your word, or not your word, your reward is going to be very great. I'm your shield. We would think that Abraham went through some difficult times in his life, but that's not the case, actually. If we go back and look, in chapter 12, that's when Abram is called by God. In chapter 13, things back in chapter 12, verse 7, God had promised Abram this. He said, to your offspring, I will give this land. And now it had been a while. Great victories, great blessings, but no offspring. And so Abram, in his prayers, is crying out, how long? Or will this promise even come to pass? God had promised him a son, promised him an offspring, that he would be able to give all of this reward, all of this land, all of these riches too. And yet God seemingly is not coming through with his promises. David, as well, is in somewhat of the same situation. Abraham is wondering, how long till I have a son? David is wondering, how long until I'm actually king? He's been anointed king, but he's not placed on that throne. King Saul is still reigning. Saul is persecuting David. David's on the run, and that's his cry as well. How long, O Lord? And that's what is there in their intro it today from Psalm 13. This is what he says. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I take counsel in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all the day? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? God, you're powerful. You can do whatever you want. So why is this taking so long? Why is Saul still pursuing me? David found himself being pursued by King Saul almost to the point of death at various places. And he was the one that was supposed to be king. So he cries out, how long? How long is my enemy? One who despises you too as well, Lord. How long is he going to be exalted and I'm stuck here fleeing for my life? How long? That question of how long was probably there with Lazarus as well. How long, O Lord, do I need to endure this suffering? There Lazarus is. He can't even bring himself to the gate of this rich man. He has to have people drop him off and dump him there and lay him at the gate. And every day he gets to hear the rich man feasting sumptuously every single day. Even on the days of fasting, even on the Sabbath, the rich man has no regard for God's word. He just is blessed though. How long, O oh Lord, does Lazarus have to stay there suffering? The rich man is clothed in nice purple clothes and even has fine linen underneath. Lazarus is clothed with sores. Dogs at least come and lick him, give him some relief. But how long is he going to have to endure that suffering? The rich man, disregarding God's word, I mean, he's not doing the fast when he's supposed to. He's feasting sumptuously every day, throwing out scraps and Lazarus longs and desires to even have the scraps, and yet he doesn't get them. How long, O oh Lord? How long is a question that probably comes up in our minds as well. About all sorts of things, and that's what we see with all three of these people. Abraham is wondering, how long until I can have this son that you've promised me? How long until I can have this family? David is wondering about his vocation, his calling. How long, O oh Lord, until I actually get to serve you as king? I would do a much better job than Saul's doing. How long? And then Lazarus with suffering. How long, O oh Lord, does he have to deal with that pain and the agony and the shame that others must look at him with? I mean, the rich man knows he's there. If he doesn't know who Lazarus is, well, then there's no reason he would know that Lazarus is there in heaven after he dies and goes to Hades and looks up and sees. And this rich man, even then, still wants Lazarus to be his servant. 
How long does Lazarus have to sit there? How long is a question that we often ask? And it's okay to ask it, but what's bad is when it turns into a different kind of question. And that's where David was going to. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? David thinks that God has given up on him, that he's not going to come through with that promise, that he's hidden his face from David, that he's going to forget him. But that's something that God never does. We often can be driven that way, though. And that's the danger of that question of how long is then we can start with our sinful nature thinking that God has given up on us and forsaken us. How long is a question we all ask? But there's one question we should never ask, and it's this. Why have you forsaken me? That's a question that only one person can ask. Only Jesus Christ. And it's a true question for him because there on the cross, carrying all of our sin, all of our shame, all of our agony, there Jesus is forsaken by his Father. There his Father does turn his face from him. And it gets dark, and Jesus is there alone in his suffering. Not just suffering of the pain of the crucifixion. That's minor compared to everything that Jesus is going through. But suffering the shame and the wrath of God that we actually deserve. That's the question that only Jesus can ask. And thanks be to God for that. He asks it, why? Well, so you never have to. So that you, along with Abraham and David and even Lazarus, who cry out how long, know that he has not forgotten the promises that he gives to you. He has not forgotten the promise of forgiveness, the promise of redemption, the promise that he will come again and restore all of creation and take all of our sufferings and all of these things and all of the pain that we cause our relatives and our families and our loved ones. All of that will be wiped away and we will have peace forever. How long is a question they all asked, but what's beautiful is that God answered all of their questions. How long for Lazarus? Well, to the point of his death. But then he is up there with Abraham. God knows his name. And he's up there in heaven being comforted, waiting for his body to be raised from the grave. The suffering is no longer there. For David, he eventually does reign on his throne. Makes miserable mistakes himself, too, as a king. But the promise that God gave to him came true. And that's what he trusted in. That's the end of the psalm there, too. He cries out, how long, O oh Lord, how long are you going to hide your face from me? How long until all of these things happen? But then in verse 5, he says this, but I have trusted in your steadfast love. That word for steadfast love is a beautiful word. It's not really a great way to translate it. But what it means is a, a covenant kind of love, a promise, a faithful kind of love. And that's the love that David holds out on. When he's crying out, how long until I'm restored? How long until I'm on the throne? How long until I'm not fleeing from my enemy? He remembers the promise that God gave to him. And he says, I've trusted in that. I'll sing to the Lord. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation because he has dealt bountifully with me. Even in the midst of his suffering, David realizes he has it better than he could possibly have it because he has God giving him what he needs. Same thing for Abraham. It took a long time, and sometimes we forget that. We know he was promised in his old age that he would have a kid. It took 25 years for God to come through on that promise. And in that time, Abraham doubts, and he struggles with all of these things. And he doubts God's promise and ends up even sinning even more by trying to make that promise come true himself. But in the end, God keeps that promise. He brings out Isaac, and Isaac begets Jacob, and all the way down the line until Jesus Christ. God's promise that he would redeem the world was another promise that he gives to Abraham and gave to Adam and Eve, and saints and Christians forever have cried out how long? Well, he did. He came to the cross. And now we, yeah, we struggle as well. But in those times when we cry out how long, remember this. It may seem like a long time for us, 25 years seemed like a long time for Abraham. But in the right time, God fulfilled his promises. And he does the same for you. The sufferings that we have now, whether they're with family, whether they're at work, or whether they're physical, all of these things Jesus will take away. 
when he comes again and he brings about that new creation. That's what his victory over death and the grave gives to you, is that promise, that covenantal love, that he does indeed love you. He has taken your sins away. And when he brings you to heaven, no more suffering, no more sorrow, no more tears. You know, we tend to think of these other saints as having great faith, Abraham, David, and on down the line, but they fell into anguish just as much and even more than we do. But there in their weakness, they're made strong by the grace that Jesus gives to them. And you and me and our weakness as well, that's where we see the strength of Jesus, that he can take miserable sinners and hold on to us and keep us in faith to the day of his coming, that we are forgiven, forgiven by Jesus Christ and his cross. Now may this peace of God that surpasses all of our understanding, may it guard and keep your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ, your Lord. Amen. This time we stand for the prayer of the church.